Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now as I spoke about the metabolites, that is the biomolecules since they take part or since they play the crucial role in the process of metabolism, that is why they are also known as metabolites. So biomolecules are also termed as metabolites. Again, there are two types of metabolites, primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. So what are primary and secondary metabolites? Let us see. So primary metabolites are those which play a key role in growth, development and reproduction. That is why they are called primary because they are playing a crucial role in the primary processes for the existence of a living organism. Now when you define a living organism, you say that these organisms are capable of growing, they reproduce, they sustain themselves. So that they, these are like the basic uh, characteristics of a living organism. And primary metabolites play the most important role in all these processes. That is why they are primary. So when are these metabolites formed? As I said, biomolecules are formed by a living organism. So when are these biomolecules formed? Because they are needed for growth. So they are formed during the growth phase as a result of energy metabolism. What is energy metabolism? As a result of the metabolic reactions or the chemical reactions taking place inside the body of a living organism. So these chemical reactions will take place during the starting of the growth phase so that more and more primary metabolites are produced and they in turn will help in growth of the organism. So as I said, this is a two-way relationship. Living organism will produce biomolecules. Biomolecules in turn will help the living organism in its um, survival. So that is like a give and take process. So since primary metabolites are helpful in growth development, so they are formed early during the growth phase as a result of the chemical reactions. So some of the examples of primary metabolites are amino acids, nucleotides, acetic acid, lactic acid, vitamins. So these are all the primary metabolites. You need all of them for growth, reproduction, development. Now these terms might be new to you for now like amino acids or nucleotides. You'll get to know about them as we go ahead with the lesson. Now let us see what are secondary metabolites. They are secondary biomolecules. So they are not really needed for all these basic features, but they are also needed for something else. So they do not play any role in growth, development or reproduction. So no primary role. That is why they are formed towards the end of growth phase. So they do not play any role in growth. So why to unnecessarily produce them early? So they are produced towards the end of the growth phase but they have some ecological importance. They play some other important roles. That is, they also are helpful to the living organism in, an, in some indirect way. For example, they are used in uh, producing dr drugs, toxins, pigments, etc. For example, when you talk about pigments like carotenoids or when you talk about drugs like uh, erythromycin, so all these things are produced from secondary metabolites. So let us look at some examples like rubber, gums, cellulose, carotenoids, morphine, erythromycin. Now you all know that all these things are also important. For example, when you talk about carotenoid, it is a pigment because of which uh, the orange, red, yellow colors which you see in a plant like the color of the fruits and the flowers is because of the presence of this pigment. So this pigment is of significance and this is a secondary metabolite. You really don't need this pigment for the growth of the plant or for the plant to reproduce, but it, it serves a different purpose. It helps in storage. It uh, helps to give colors to different parts of the plant. Similarly, if you talk about erythromycin, it is a medicine. So this medicine is also produced from a secondary metabolite. So even though it is not helpful in growth and reproduction, but it helps to fight against so many diseases. So that way also it helps the body. So it is not only the primary metabolites that we need for the survival. We also need the secondary metabolites because they play an indirect role in the survival of living organisms. So this is about the primary and secondary metabolites. 
So now we will talk about the types of biomolecules. So by now it is clear to you what are biomolecules, the molecules produced by living organisms. Why are we studying biomolecules? Because they play a key role in the process of metabolism. And I hope by now you understood what is metabolism because we have spoken a lot about it. Now let us see broadly what are the types of biomolecules. Broadly they are of two types. One is micromolecules and one is macromolecules. So I don't really need to explain what they are because their names are self-explanatory. So wherever the word micro comes, that means small. And wherever the word macro comes, that means large. So the biomolecules which are small are bi micromolecules which are comparatively larger, they are macromolecules. So how do we define which is small and which is large? So, I mean, because it is, these are all relative terms. So when you have, let us suppose, you have a younger brother who is say five years old so for you he might be very young but let us suppose if i have a younger brother who is one year old so for me your five year old brother is not that young because i feel that my young year brother is younger than your brother so your brother is elder so big and small are all relative terms so we need to define a threshold below which it is uh, small above which it is large so bi biomicromolecules are those whose molecular weight weights less than 1000 Dalton. So anything less than 1000 Dalton would fall under biomicromolecules. Anything above this will fall under biomacromolecules. Now what all falls under the category of micromolecules? Amino acids, sugars, nucleotides, lipids, water minerals, they all fall under micromolecules. Now, if you see the first four, they are all organic micromolecules. The later one that is water and minerals, they are inorganic micromolecules. Organic anything with carbon, inorganic anything without carbon. And under macromolecules are proteins, carbohydrates and nucleic acids. Now, when we compare the structure of micromolecules with macromolecules, it is seen that the macromolecules have a comparatively simpler structure when compared to macromolecules. That's because the macromolecules are formed from micromolecules. When many micromolecules come together, they form a macromolecule. So it is very obvious that the structure of a macromolecule will be more complex than a micromolecule. Also, uh, micromolecules generally have a higher water solubility that is most of them will be soluble in water however there is an exception to this and the exception is lipids so lipids are the only micromolecules which are insoluble in water they are not soluble in water uh, similarly it is also seen that these micromolecules can uh, group themselves together to form macromolecules so for that also lipids are an exception. So lipids do not group together to form a macromolecule. So they exist as themselves. So that way lipids are, that is why sometimes people get confused whether lipids are micromolecules or macromolecules. But looking at the parameter of molecular weights, they fall under micromolecules, but they have these two exceptions. One is that they are not soluble in water and the other is they do not have the ability to polymerize to form macromolecules. So these are uh, the different biomolecules which we will be dealing in this lesson. So particularly in this chapter, what are the topics which we will cover? We will talk about amino acids, yes. We will talk about sugars, yes, we will talk about nucleotides, we will talk about lipids. We will also talk about proteins, carbohydrates and nucleic acids. So these are the things which we are going to cover in this lesson. We are really not going to talk about water and minerals because uh, uh, that can be covered later also. And I mean, we don't really need to explain a lot about the structure of water or minerals. So we have excluded those two in this chapter as of now. So now, whatever things I told you that we have broadly classified into four sections, that is proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and lipids. So these are the four sections because proteins are macromolecules and these proteins are made up of many micromolecules, that is amino acids. Again, when you talk about carbohydrates, these are the macromolecules which are made up of several micromolecules. And what are those micromolecules? They are sugars. 
Again, nucleic acids are macromolecules which are made up of many micromolecules which are nucleotides. So when we will talk about proteins, carbohydrates and nucleic acids, we will by default cover amino acids, sugars and nucleotides. So we are left with lipids. So lipids we will discuss separately. So now hereafter, after this slide, we will start talking about carbohydrate. Then we'll talk about proteins. Then we'll talk about nucleic acids. And then we will conclude this lesson talking about lipids. So these are broadly the four sections which we will talk about in this lesson. So I hope that you have got a fair idea about what are biomolecules, what are the types of biomolecules and what exactly are we going to study in this lesson. So good enough. With this, I think we are all set to start talking about carbohydrates. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.